Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 10 full tutorial series for absolute beginners. In today's episode, we are going to learn a very very important and very very fundamentally critical topic called directives. You cannot build an Angular application without directives. Is it a true statement or false? Think again. That's true. You cannot build any Angular application without a directive. Now you'll, you will think, hey, so far we have covered 16 episodes, but we never created any directive and it's still working. You At the end of this episode, you will get your answer. Let's get started. This is part 17 of the Angular 10 complete tutorial playlist. I am planning around 100 tutorials for you, including live application as well. So make sure you check out the notes and the Go GitHub link for the code. All right. So, so far, uh, so these are the topics that are on your screen right now, which I've covered so far, right? So make sure that you have checked out all the previous episodes so that you have continuity in your learning. Today we are talking and focusing on learning directives in Angular. All right, so the first and the most foremost question that is often asked in interview, especially uh, if you're a little bit experienced kind of a developer in a role, the question is what is an Angular directive? A lot of people talk about types of directive, different built-in directives available, etc., etc. but sometimes they fail to explain a simple thing like what is a directive, right? So a directive, is used to extend the power of HTML by giving its new syntax, right? That's the simplest way you can explain. Angular directives are used to extend the, are used to extend the power of the HTML by giving its new syntax, right? Now what directives can do? Direct, directives can extend, can change, modify behavior of any DOM element, right? So that is what is an Angular directive. Now, what are the different types of directives? So there are namely three types of directives. Component directive, structural directive, and attribute directives, right? Now these are the three built-in directives, right? Now there is also a thing called custom directives, right? Where we can create our own directives, but high level, there are three types of directives, right? Now, like I said, cust component directive. This we have seen in the previous episode. We have generated components and we know that every Angular application comes with at least one component, which is app component, right? So at the beginning of this episode, I told you, can there be an application without any directives? The answer is no. It has There has to be one and that one is a component directive. It's called app component, right? So if you want to refer, you can refer it in your um, folder directory, you go, you would have a default app component here, right? So you'll have a default component called app component, right? That means every application should have at least one component directive. Now, why are these called component directives? Because they have its own templates, right? That also we have explored in detail in the last episode. So make sure that you check it out. It's extremely important that you understand and follow each and every topic carefully. Now you can attach events to component directives, right? That can also be done. So that is what we call it as event binding, right? So we'll see that in the coming episodes. The next one is structural directives. So what are structural directives? Anything that updates the structure of the template or the view or the page. So for example, when you say ng4, it will add more elements. It, it may delete elements. Ng if may toggle the view. Ng switch based on a certain condition, will you will display an element or not? So these are all called as structural directives, right? Because they are changing the uh, structure of your view or the structure of the template, right? The next one is uh, attribute directives, right? So attributes are nothing but like ng style, ng class, right? Again, we can extend it by writing custom directives, but that's a separate topic altogether. We'll cover down the line, right? All right, so how do we generate a directive, right? So like I said, we can generate a custom component. Component is also a directive, right? So we can write ng generate component followed by component name. We can also write ng generate directive followed by directive name. That becomes your custom directive. What it does, how to use it, we'll cover it later. That's not for today, right? 
So let's go back and kind of make some notes for you quickly so you have a recap of what we are doing. This is episode number 17. We are learning about directives. Right? So what is a directive? Directive is a, is a way to extend our HTML, right? Um, both view and behavior, right? Including both view as well as behavior, right? So directives are used to extend the power of HTML, right? Now, there are mainly three types of three types of directives. Right. So first is component directive and you have structural directive and then you have attribute directive. Right. So I'm going to explain you a little bit so that you understand how it works. Right. So with some examples now. So if you go to app component .ts, we saw this is a template, right? This has its own template. This is the selector, right? So this is an example of app component is an example of component directive, right? Now in the structural directive, we'll have something called ng if, ng for, and ng switch, right? Now we'll see them how to use them in the next episode, but today just know that attribute is nothing but ng class, ng style. These are all the built-in ones, right? Uh, at the same time, we can also have custom directives. Okay. So what are custom directives that we can create our own directives. We can create our own um, attributes and which can be reused again, right? And how do we generate them? So we generate using ng generate directive. And I'm creating a new directive. I'm saying highlight a row, right? Highlight row, right? Or I'm just saying just highlight, right? So what this will do, it will generate a new directive. And what I will do with it is wherever I use this directive, it will highlight it, right? So let me show you that how. So what we are going to do, ng generate directive. So let's first clear this screen. Okay. So here we will write ng generate directive and then I'm going to write highlight. So see, I'm generating a directive by the name highlight. Now it will generate in your app and that can be reused anywhere and everywhere you want, wherever you want to highlight or oh. simple CRM. And then again, all right, so now you have to be inside the project directory to generate it. So that's what I've done. ng generate directive highlight. Let's give it one quick minute. In the meanwhile, please do like, share, comment, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you in advance. All right, so we see that uh, it has created our directive and it has updated our app module also, right? So you see highlight dot directive, right? You see here the files are generated directive and directive dot spec, right? Don't worry about it today. This is an advanced, an advanced, advanced topic. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll revisit that, right? Pick and we are, we will revisit, revisit this topic again once we have our foundations better right for today just understand that what is a directive what are the different types of directives and how do you relate to that right because in the next episode right um, so yeah like I said uh, learn about the previous um, check out the previous episodes to learn about component directives that I've covered in the previous episodes in detail make sure you don't miss that in the next episode, I'll start with structural directives. Again, you don't want to miss on that one. So make sure you stay tuned and please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.